Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk About It with the Psych Hub team. I'm Dr. Whitley Lassen, and I'm so excited to be joined here again by Dr. Elizabeth McMahon. We have five videos coming out together on a special series around anxiety. Dr. McMahon is a licensed clinical psychologist and anxiety expert and has a private practice in San Francisco, California. She's also the author of Overcoming Anxiety and Panic Interactive Guide. Welcome, Dr. McMahon. Thank you, Dr. Lassen. I'm delighted to be back. Talking about anxiety is exciting because it's so prevalent. It's such an important topic. And the more you know about it, the better you can handle it. If you haven't seen our first video where we talk about why people experience anxiety, that's a great place to start. Today, we're going to talk about what anxiety is. So anxiety is basically a misfiring of a natural protective life-saving response. It's very important that we understand when we're in danger and we're being threatened and that we respond to it. But Unfortunately, the part of our brain that reacts to threat and danger is so primitive and so quickly reactive that it can send a message of danger when we're not really in danger. That's when anxiety causes a problem. We talked in the earlier video about five things that make a a false alarm, a misfiring of anxiety more likely. Genetics, chemicals, external stress, how you generally talk to yourself and what you expect of yourself, and then unhelpful lessons that your brain might have learned from past experiences. These anxiety triggers, these factors, can send a message of threat that the brain, this part of the brain, just reacts to, and then it causes anxiety. It pumps out adrenaline to prepare you physically to run or fight, to survive a life and death struggle. At the same time, being ready to run or fight doesn't do you any good if your mind is off thinking about the flowers or what a lovely day it is. So in addition to getting you physically ready to run or fight, it emotionally triggers and sends a sense of danger, threat, so that you can feel anything from slightly worried or uneasy to terrified and panicky. And that emotion gets you motivated to figure out where the danger is. And so your mind starts looking around for danger. So in other words, your thoughts get flooded with thoughts of fear and danger. Where's the danger? Where's the danger? What might be there be a problem? Why am I upset? Why am I anxious? If you don't understand that this can be a false alarm, anxiety can cause you to do things that actually make things worse in the long run instead of better. Because the natural action when you're in danger is to leave, escape, and not go back, avoid in the future. Or if you have to be in a dangerous situation to stay hyper alert, hyper vigilant, on guard all the time, and to try to do things to keep yourself safe. And if you have to fight, well, you want to fight with all your life. So Dr. McMahon, if these are the natural actions that you should take to stay safe when you're in danger, what happens if you take these actions when there's a false alarm? That's a great question because what happens is your protective bodyguard reacting brain sees what you're doing and thinks, oh, my person wouldn't be doing that unless there was some danger. And now this part of your brain that wants to protect you becomes even more likely to send false alarms. It remembers where you were, what you were doing, what you were feeling, what was happening in your body, what you were thinking. It remembers everything that happens to you in order to find threat and danger. So for example, if you had a car accident driving on the highway on a rainy night, maybe the next time you get in the car or the next hundred times you get in the car, it gets anxious, particularly if it's at night or if you're on a highway or if it's rainy or even if you're just driving. So is there any good news? The good news is this response we are designed to have, our body is designed to have, 
It's the same protective, life-saving response that helps us leap out of the way of a car if we're in the crosswalk and a car is racing through the red light and doesn't see us. Or it's the same response that lets you wake up in the middle of the night to your baby's cry. It's well-intentioned, but the trouble is sometimes it's misinformed. The really good news is the reacting brain is not the whole of your brain. We have the whole cerebral cortex, the whole higher developed, smarter part of the brain that makes us fully human, that we can use and turn to, to balance our reacting brain, to cope with anxiety, and to overcome anxiety problems. Thank you, Dr. McMahon, for your detailed explanation about what anxiety is. Next time, we're going to talk about what anxiety feels like and then how to overcome anxiety. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of the next video. For more resources from Dr. McMahon on anxiety, fears, and stress, visit her website or check out her book, Overcoming Anxiety and Panic Interactive Guide. Be sure to subscribe, follow us on social, and visit psychhub.com to learn about our mental health ally certification and our CBT courses for mental health providers. Leave us comments with questions and suggestions on what you want to learn more about. Thank you, Dr. Mann, for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to the next two videos when we talk about what anxiety feels like and how to overcome it.